stifling heat of the Palestinian sun, where the very air shimmers with the memories of countless yesterdays, there stands a colossal canvas of despair and defiance. A canvas born from the age-old blood feud that courses through this ancient land like an eternal river. The separation wall, they call it, a stark monolith cleaving through the heart of Palestine and Israel. Here, where the ceaseless echoes of conflict have etched their indelible marks on the souls of a people, a different kind of artistry thrives. It is not the masterpieces that adorn the hallowed halls of distant museums, but the raw, unadulterated expressions of resistance and resilience. It is the graffiti, an intricate tapestry of voices crying out, pleading for peace, demanding justice, and daring to dream of a world where this wall is but a memory. In the strokes of spray paint, in the vivid hues of descent, the very spirit of this contested landscape takes form, transcending the brutal divide and whispering hope in the language of colors that knows no borders. Over the past few decades, the revolutionary art form known as graffiti has met perhaps its most controversial canvas, the West Bank Wall, a physical and symbolic divide between Palestinians and Israelis and the land to which they lay claim. Though opposition to the wall's presence has been spoken since its inception, the world only truly began to listen after it first could look. Through the intersection of artwork and activism, Graffiti has become the visual language of resistance across the West Bank. Thus, a mechanism for separation has become a mural, uniting its local and global audiences by depicting a shared vision of a more just, peaceful future. This mural, which has an unidentified author, depicts the first female member of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, Leila Khaled. The photograph of her, Wearing a kafiye and holding an AK-47 rifle, taken by Eddie Adams, became a symbol of the Palestinian resistance in the 1970s. She was also the first woman to hijack a plane in the late 1960s. On August 29, 1969, Khaled was part of a team that hijacked TWA Flight 840 en route from Rome to Tel Aviv, diverting the Boeing 707 to Damascus. The hijackers believed that Yitzhak Rabin, who was then the Israeli ambassador to the United States, would be on board. But he was not. Khaled claimed to have ordered the pilot to fly over Haifa, her birthplace. While no one was injured, the hijackers blew up the nose section of the aircraft after the passengers disembarked. Following this hijacking and the widespread publication of a photograph of her with an AK-47 rifle and a kafiye, Khaled underwent six plastic surgery operations on her nose and chin to conceal her identity and prepare for possible future hijackings as she did not want to be recognized as an icon. She asterisk has consequently gone down in history as both a hero and a terrorist. Her mural on the wall, near Bethlehem in the West Bank, is a staunch reminder of both the resistance's past and its contested presence. In 2018, Turkish journalist Mustafa Hasuna captured an image of a young man at a protest during the Great March of Return on the boundary between Gaza and Israel. The young man, shirtless and holding a Palestinian flag as well as a slingshot, enveloped by the smoke from tear gas. This photograph turned Aid Abu Amro into an instant icon of the Palestinian resistance. The image bears a strong resemblance to the famous painting Liberty Leading the People by the French painter Eugène Delacroix. Another mural mimicking this renowned artwork has appeared on the, the West Bank wall. It positions the struggle in the aesthetics of the French Revolution, which provided the foundational beliefs of liberal Europe and America. It appeals to a familiar value system of fighting for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. AED was born in 1999 
and young people of his age in Gaza have experienced the Second Intifada and three all-out Israeli military assaults on Gaza during their lifetimes. Poverty and death have been constant companions for youth like him, and participating in protests has been a way for them to express their anger over the injustices and oppression they have endured since birth. Since 2018, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians have been injured or killed in protest activities, with one quarter of them being women and children. On the day when Mustafa Hassouna took photographs at the scene, 32 Palestinians were injured in the protest activities. In the constantly developing visual iconography of Palestinian resistance, there is one integral symbol of defiance, Handala. In 1975, Palestinian cartoonist Naji al-Ali created the 10-year-old boy who will remain 10 years old until the occupation ends. Barefoot, with tattered clothes, and his hair meant to resemble a porcupine's spikes protecting him, Handala stands with his arms crossed behind his back, rejecting incomplete solutions that fail to address the root of the conflict, Israeli settler colonialism. Though Al-Ali was assassinated in 1987, Handala's image stands, painted in several murals along the apartheid wall today. Similar to Berlin wall graffiti art, much of the artwork is unclaimed by artists and remains anonymous. In 2005, British artist Banksy created nine wall murals, among which Flying Balloon Girl received much acclaim. The balloons became a symbol of hope, and the young girl soaring with the balloons seemed to represent the aspirations of the Palestinian people for a miracle to break free from their challenging circumstances. This graffiti illustrates two little boys in black and white playing on the sand. Above them, we see a false hole with a colored and heavenly landscape. In the background, there are palm trees, and in the foreground, a beautiful blue sea. The two children stand behind the fence and have shovels and buckets. They seem happy, and they look at the spectator. The beach is inaccessible because the hole is too high. Banksy represents two children enclosed between a wall and a real barrier. The location of the work, Palestine and a beach, are opposed. Banksy criticizes the wall and the right of every human to hope for a better future. Children draw our attention to a utopian dream. This wall, which was to be a protection, is in reality an obstacle to peace. In addition to creating graffiti, Banksy built the Waldorf Hotel in Bethlehem in 2017, the city where Jesus Christ was born. Banksy's Waldorf Hotel is both a nod to the Waldorf luxury hotel chain and the Israeli West Bank Wall, located just meters away from the hotel. Each room in Banksy's hotel looks out onto the illegal concrete barrier, which separates Israel from the Palestinian territories. Banksy boasts it is the worst view of any hotel in the world. Banksy recalls his first visit to the West Bank Wall, in which an old Palestinian man told him that his painting made the wall look beautiful. After Banksy thanked him, the man replied, We don't want it to be beautiful. We hate this wall. Go home. This echoes local communities' fear that, by beautifying the wall, even with messages that seem supportive to the local community, these artists are both normalizing apartheid and belittling the struggle. 
The same controversy arises from Australian artist Lush Sucks. In 2017, he painted huge murals of Donald Trump, pictured above, Hillary Clinton, and even one work of Trump and Netanyahu kissing, which reads as more than a little homophobic, despite the leftist bend of his subject matter. In a Medium article, Palestinian artist Soud Hafawi referred to him as the resident tourist, selfish and greedy. He gave a vague political shape to his graffiti, which gathered some artists and some local and international followers around him. They began helping him draw more and metastasize. Hefawi continues on what many see as a white savior dynamic to Western artists in the West Bank. I don't want a colonialist to teach me how to fight colonialists, referring to Lushuk's Australian background. What made things worse for the resident tourist was that he seemed both upfront and utterly unconcerned about his intentions. He crowdsourced his ideas, which ended up obfuscating the point of painting the wall because they weren't about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict at all. One saw Trump writing a fan letter to Eminem. This was back when the rapper slammed the president. Another one shows Mark Zuckerberg with red eyes and the caption, The more of your data I gather, the more I understand what it means to be human. The most offensive, perhaps, is one depicting the wall as Rick Sanchez from popular adult sci-fi cartoon series Rick and Morty. To be fair, you have to have a very high IQ to understand the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, he said, sardonically referring to a viral meme from the show's fan base, which in turn was an irreverent reaction to critiques of fans' misogynist and self-congratulatory undertones. I'm not pushing a number required to solve it. I'm here to paint memes. Spanish twin brothers, Raul and Davide Pere, a.k.a. the street art duo Howe and Amp Nozem, spoke to this dynamic in 2013 when they were in the West Bank, commenting that they believed that just coming here and tagging, doing pieces, would be inappropriate and selfish. They instead tried to give back to the community by giving arts workshops to women and kids in the West Bank. Howe and Nozem taught the women and kids everything, from basic drawing skills to creating stencils, to creating colors with paints to a crash course in spray painting. The messaging behind the graffiti on the West Bank wall can be best understood through the term sumud, which translates to steadfastness. In Palestinian culture, sumud is a cultural value and ideology that expresses resilience in light of adversity, an ideal especially referenced in the context of the Israeli occupation of the West Bank. Sumud is a form of social solidarity and coherence against injustice and oppression, which can be a model for emancipation for other nations who suffer persecution in the world. To depict Sumud, graffiti on the West Bank wall tends to feature symbols of importance to the Palestinian identity, quote influential peacemakers such as Gandhi and Nelson Mandela, ask rhetorical questions such as, if all humans are equal, why do they have to live separated, and evoke a range of emotional responses from tears to laughter. As a public and accessible art form utilized by local youth and professional artists alike, graffiti on the West Bank Wall became a revolutionary act of resistance, leading many across the world to think critically about the wall's existence, and ultimately, what peace in the area should look like. In 2007, Palestinian artist Maid Abdel Hamid and two assistants spray painted what appears to be a 14-meter-long array of random Arabic letters. When unscrambled, however, these letters spell out the 1988 Palestinian Declaration of Independence. Because of the piece's location in an area where virtually only Palestinian locals, not tourists, would come across it, Hamid describes it as a message of hope for Palestinians and for them alone. Though the influence of the West Bank Wall's graffiti has become global, its potential to inspire and serve the local community cannot be understated. Even if it does not invoke peace across the world, it has proven to remind Palestinians of their sumud and encourages them to anticipate an eventual end to their struggles. Words fall short of describing this impact, and art can only begin to capture it. In the end, the graffiti on the West Bank barrier 
fights for peace by redefining it. It is proven that peace in the Middle East is not just merely a handshake marking the beginning of a diplomatic arrangement, nor is it a white flag waved to end an armed conflict. Rather, peace is ceaseless advocacy towards a reality where equality is far more indispensable than ease. It lies inside those who once felt as though their stories were not worth listening to, but feel empowered by others coming forward to share their own with an audience from across the globe. It lies in conversations where people listen to understand, not to argue, where people become willing to sacrifice their comfort for others' welfare. It lies in the minds of creatives who were brave enough to envision a more righteous world and invite others into it. It lies atop concrete, and it lies in an aerosol can.